Asymmetric tensor fields have important applications in fluid dynamics and earthquake engineering. Previous analysis decomposes an asymmetric tensor field into different isolated regions with different deformation modes including expanding, contracting, rotation, and stretching. Previous visualization for asymmetric tensor fields places hypergeometric lines through the whole domain by following the eigenvectors in real domains where the deformation is stretching dominant and the pseudo eigenvectors in complex domains where the deformation is rotation dominant. Such a visualization makes the identification of different deformation modes difficult. In this work, we present a hybrid visualization to address this issue. Specifically, hyperstreamlines are used in real domains and glyphs are placed in complex domains. Furthermore, an image space implementation is introduced which enables the analysis of asymmetric tensor fields defined on curved surfaces with complicated geometry. In what follows, we demonstrate the use of our tool in the visualization of the simulated earthquake deformation data and engine fluid flow. This dataset represents a simulation of the ground surface deformation caused by the 1992 Landers CA earthquake and is based on a geodetic data inversion of the actual earthquake. The surface trace of the fault rupture is identified by narrow green strips from the southeast trending toward the north central part of the image. Note that surface traces of earthquake fault ruptures are not perfectly continuous lines but are comprised of many fault offsets. This fault ruptured in a right lateral sense, which means that the east side of the fault moved south and the west side moved north. Clockwise rotation dominates the region close to and off the ends of the rupture zone, as expected from a right lateral fault. Because of the relative motion between the fault displacement and the far view, which is fixed, the area away from the fault experiences counterclockwise rotation. Once we place the hyperstream lines and glyphs on the image, we can see details of strain field not apparent in the first image. The deformation away from the fault shows stretching in the direction parallel to the rupture as expected. There were numerous degenerate points along the fault, which represent pure rotational deformation. This is the result of discontinuities in the fault rupture that break up the main rupture trace into many smaller rupture segments with tips that create clockwise rotation similar to both ends of the main rupture zone. To see the fault rupture zone better, we can eliminate the degenerate points in the visualization. We can also eliminate the hyperstream lines to emphasize the rotational deformation. Now we zoom in to observe the conjugate fault, that is a small sub fault rupture induced by the main fault rupture. The presence of the conjugate fault affects the strain field on the southwest side of the fault, which is captured by our glyphs. We see the effect of this conjugate fault as a narrow strip of the counterclockwise rotation with stretching locally affecting the broad counterclockwise rotation of the main rupture zone. Details like this captured by our visualization technique can help geodesists and seismologists better interpret co-seismic and post-seismic geodetic and seismic data respectively. This view shows the front end of the cooling jacket with the coolant intake near the bottom. This shows fluid rotational pattern in the complex domains. The glyph represents the elliptical deformation of fluid parcels. We added the hyperstreamlining this figure, which represents fluid stretching pattern along the major eigenvector and the compression pattern along the minor eigenvectors. Finally, we added the degenerate points where fluid motion is purely rotational. In this view, we see that the coolant that enters into the jacket first expands and forms a pair of vertices counterclockwise on the right and clockwise on the left. Some of the coolant is pushed up to the cylinder head through a small gasket opening. The flow through the gasket shoots up to the top of the cylinder head forming a pair of vortices. 
now clockwise on the right and counterclockwise on the left. Also observed is the fluid stretching patterns expressed by the hyperstream lines. The cooling jacket flow can be further examined by rotating the wheel. This figure shows many detailed flow features in the surface of complex shape, expansion, contraction, rotations, and stretching.